Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I actually wanted to have some fun here and kind of analyze my own golf swing, kind of show you guys the way I like to break down swing, and then you can kind of also know the few things that I'm working on. Um, so here's a good swing with a driver. You can see I have kind of that nice tilted address that makes it so that that trail arm is a bit under that lead arm, which is really fully extended. So you'll see the shaft kind of goes up that trail arm. And then what you'll see, and it's a big key to my swing that I really, really believe in, coming through impact, you're going to see, you're going to see that club come back to that same, uh, you know, angle at, at impact. And that's something that I really believe in. But let, let, let's go into the back swing. And so it gets back to, uh, you know, if I actually made this, this line a little bit longer, you'd see right around there, it's, uh, the, the, the shaft of the club is actually planing out very similar uh, line to the actual setup line, um, a shaft angle line. You can see that club face is actually very, very uh, in line with kind of my left hand. So this connection between my address hand and that club face really stays connected all the way through the swing. I'll be able to show you more when I do the front on, but I kind of want to just give you a, a quick go through here. Um, and this is what I'm talking about. This is something that I very much care about in my golf swing, is the fact that as I'm coming down, those hands get right back onto that original plane line, and that club shaft is literally planing out and coming down that line perfectly. Um, and so that's something, so kind of if we like look through it here. So before we go to the front end, I also want to show you some, a few things that I look at when it comes to posture. It's very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take it right on my kind of hip joint here and just go right up to my ear. Right? It's kind of just a good way to see how the angles. Uh, now a little bit of drop is okay. But what you'd like to see is you'd like to see that maintain its line pretty well. So right there, I've done very, very well. That, that um, essentially my upper body has not moved a great deal. Obviously, there's been a ton of rotation. But the actual stability in my head is very, very good. Now, I'm fine if I see a little bit of lowering here. You know, I'm bracing on my lead knee a little bit. You will see that? So that's a little bit of lowering. But in general, you can see that I hold my posture very well, which is why you know I've been hitting the ball pretty well, and you fire down the line. Okay, so let, let me go ahead and do a front on. Let me see if I can find a front on. Here we go. So we're going to do this in slow motion here. Um, not the golf swing. Um, unfortunately, I can't play it in full speed because it'll. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you it in full speed, but I have to go to another program. It's for whatever reason it blacks out. So, what I got, what I want to show you guys is that lead foot. That lead foot comes up, and I'm a big believer in this now, um, because for me, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see a lowering. I don't want to see a lowering on that backswing like a load, right? It might be okay for power, but when it comes to uh, weight transfer, and when it comes to actually getting loaded on your right foot, if you start to lower into that left foot, it can mess with your weight transfer. It can create all these different variables. So I actually like my left, foot, my lead foot coming up a little bit because it really makes sure that I get right onto my right leg, and it also makes sure that there's a nice, uh, there's a nice transfer of weight in transition. So in transition, you don't want you don't want to go too early, you don't want to go too late, and this kind of makes sure that I get back, and then I start transferring the weight in transition. And so for me, it's been very very helpful. Me and Todd worked on this a lot. Uh, early Mo Norman did it, Ben Hogan did it, Sam Snead did it. I mean, actually, you know, a lot more Hall of Famers have done it than haven't done it. Even Nick Price used to do it. Um, I mean, obviously. Uh, uh, a guy named Jack Nicholas, who won quite a few majors, uh, did it through most of his career. Um, and so there we go. We're coming down through impact. And the biggest things that I look at when I'm looking at front on is I want to see that I have a nice braced knee at impact. So you can see. Oh, sorry, not that one. Let me get to the line here. See this braced knee? There. 
I have a nice brace lead knee. Um, my trail foot comes up. Uh, I'm swinging very hard. My club head speed is getting right around 117, 118. And I have so much momentum going into it. The biggest thing I want to see is I just want to make sure that that, tra that lead knee is bent. Uh, I'm not worried as much about my trail foot. Um, as long as that lead knee is in a good brace position, then I tend to hit the ball very, very well. Um, I think a big reason why anyone would try to keep that right foot down is a lot of the time if that foot starts to creep up, that lead knee will start to straighten and you'll start to raise. And if you start that jumping motion, it just creates a lot of variables that inevitably can lead to um, a lot of miss, miss shots and a lot of inconsistency. So I don't like to think, I play better when I'm thinking more about that braced lead knee and less about my right foot staying down. That's something that I've done, you know, as I've worked on this for a long time. Pretty good power, feeling good about that. Uh, kind of nice movement through the ball. Um, I'm going to really quickly close this out so I can show you what the actual swing looks like uh, in real time because it has to be a different, um, if I can find it. There we are. So here it is. See, it has a nice, it has a nice uh, speed to it right now. I'm really liking it. I feel like. Um, do you see how smooth it is through impact? And that's something that I look, and that's what this lead knee does. When your lead knee is great, and you're able to return that shaft to the original position, uh, you get this really smooth. So here's another guy who who returns his his shaft to the original position, and uh, you guys have definitely heard of him. His name is Ben Hogan. So yeah, here's a good example. So let's let's go to here, right? So he has such a smooth look through the ball, right? So smooth, like there's not, and, and my swing kind of has that now. And if I wonder why my swing has that move, if you look at mine, just kind of snaps through, but not a, not a big aggressive jump, it's just kind of smooth through impact. And I really believe that has to do with the lead knee. So here, let's take a look at this. So I want you to. So if you can see, and he talks about this in his book, but we're going to go to here. There's his kneecap right there, if you can see his kneecap. And then we're going to go right down to the middle of his heel. So you can see he's probably got about, about the same level of brace as I do. Now, uh, Ben Hogan and I don't have the same exact swing. We have slightly different set, setups. But I think that that's what leads. When you see these guys that are essentially single planers and they're able to return that shaft to that original position, there's, there's a nice smooth motion through impact. You can see that they're not having to make a bunch of adjustments through impact. And, um, and I really believe that's kind of a key to the level of consistency. When you don't have an aggressive jump motion and you're just creating speed, without that, you're able to... Uh, you're really able to have a much smoother, more consistent impact position, and therefore you're able to control your ball much, much better. Uh, you know, all of that is is me theorizing as to why, but you know, and then you go back to me here. You can kind of see the smoothness through, and I'm you know hitting the ball quite well, um, and uh, and so I'm going to show you one more thing real quick. I'm just going to go to my front on and kind of just show you me, show you kind of something that's a, a little bit more unique and a little different compared to a guy like Ben Hogan. But you know, I set up with quite a bit of tilt. So if you take the center of my um, kind of belt buckle and then you kind of go through to the center of my head, you know, that's 74. So I got at least probably it looks like a 16 degrees of tilt. And what you're going to see here is 16 degrees of tilt is a lot. But I'm going to maintain that tilt. So it's actually going to increase. So here we are, in the middle of my belt buckle, or kind of like the middle between my two legs, I guess. And there you go. So now we're literally looking at about 25 degrees of tilt 
And so I started with 16, so I increased 9. But if you look at people that are uh, starting more straight up, they have to create sometimes 20, 20 to 25 degrees of tilt in their golf swing. So if you think you're supposed to set up all straight up, that's not the right way because you're going to have to hit that ball. You're going to have to impact that ball with about 25 degrees of tilt. And so setting up near the 25 degrees of tilt or 20 degrees of tilt is going to make less variation from your address position to your impact position. And it just makes sense, you know, kind of keep it simple, stupid. You know, like less, less variances is going to lead to more consistency. And so that's something that I believe. Um, and so I think a big key to my golf swing and to what I believe is that if you have good tilt at address and then you're impacting on the same line as you are at address, so let me get my down the line pitch, okay? And so you set up with a decent amount of tilt so that there's less variance when it comes to a tilt perspective and then you set up so that you can actually impact closer to your setup and you just have less variance going on in your swing. You can feel impact better. And you can see, you know, my impact position and my address position is only changed by my hips rotation. You know, the rest of the lines stay pretty simple. It's essentially like I set up a certain way and then it's just a hard rotate with speed. And so all you want to do is you just don't want to inhibit your speed. And so you want everything to be as consistent as possible while creating maximum speed. And I really, really believe making sure to set up with plenty of tilt and making sure to be able to impact on that original plane line are two massive keys. Um, and, and they obviously go hand in hand. You know, and so this swing has a lot less variables. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. And, um, you, know, I, I, you know, I'm actually not going to be changing a whole lot. I'm just mostly going to be working out, training my body, trying to get a little bit more speed and I would love to be right around 120, 121 club head speed going into this next season before I start playing tournaments uh, when it gets warm up here. Um, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions on anything that I've said here, please go ahead and throw it down in the comments below. I love answering questions. I love talking to you guys. And uh, I hope you like this, this quick look at uh, my golf swing. All right. And the way I think about it.